making the most important decision. This is the Athletic Scholarship Podcast, episode number 119. And welcome to our series on the recruiting funnel. It's day six of seven days. I'm John Fugler, your host. I'm an athletic scholarship coach, as well as a father of two scholarship athletes. I'm a podcaster and author. And uh, please email, let, let me know what you think of the series. I've never done a seven day series consecutively, but this is a, a good topic. We're talking about the recruiting funnel where you go from jumping into the funnel as a recruited athlete and then coming out on the other side as a scholarship athlete. We want to get you from here to there. In this episode, we're going to talk about the most important decision. Uh, This is sponsored by the new Recruit Me Athletic Scholarship System, just released November 1st. I encourage you to check it out at recruitme.com slash system. That's recruit-me.com slash system. I've got a link in my show notes as well. Um, Bob is a friend of mine. Uh, Bob was my catcher in high school. (laughs) I was a left-handed pitcher, just like Clayton Kershaw, who just signed up again with the Dodgers. I I was just like Clayton and uh, didn't quite make it past college, though. But I did, (laughs) compete at a four-year school, and it was a great experience. Uh, Anyway, I was a left-handed pitcher in high school. I still was in college, and I still am today, although I don't pitch. Uh, But Bob was my catcher. So Bob and I uh, didn't see each other. I mean, after we got done with high school, he went his way, I went my way. And then all of a sudden, Bob's name appeared as one of my customers for the recruitment system. I kid you not. And this happened a few years ago. So Bob and I got reacquainted. I heard his story. Um, It was really wild because now we're working on another generation. His daughter, his daughter was looking for a scholarship. And I could tell you the story, but I want Bob's words to ring out to you as we talk about this most important decision. I'll get to that in a moment. But Bob's story relates. He said, I started with Kathleen, my golfer, when she was a sophomore, followed your program, and she received an offer for a full scholarship the first day that coaches could contact her. It was awesome. I thought your program was great, very practical, and like you say on the website, it's not hard if you're willing to put the effort in. We started with 40 schools to contact, had it down to about 20 this past spring and summer, And we got the perfect deal. What a great story. Uh, You'll notice a couple things here I want to point out. First of all, Bob said we started with 40 schools. That's all part of the funnel. You're jumping into the funnel, the coach's funnel, but also you got to have a funnel that's wide enough to jump into. 40 schools, 50 schools is great to have on your list as you begin pursuing them and pursuing that scholarship. So they did it right. They said they had it down to about 20 past spring spring or summer and as you know as a funnel it it narrows down if they only had like five schools at the outset they may not have had any that were in the running and where she was in the running for a scholarship start with many schools start wide and work that that funnel so it's kind of two funnels going on here i don't want to confuse you or, or anything like that but you got the funnel that you're setting up because you have a lot of schools, and you're narrowing it down, but you're jumping into the recruiting funnel because there's a recruiting funnel going on that coaches have set up, and they're taking a a large number of recruits and narrowing it down to see who they're going to offer scholarships to. That's, That's that funnel. The most important decision is your school choice. I believe that you should go to the school that's the best fit for you. And it has a lot more to do than just sports. It has a lot more to do than that. There are so many other factors. There's so many other variables in this. Um, how far away from home? What are the academics? Do they offer you the major or what you are interested in, at least at this point? I know you might change. That's pretty common. Uh, there are several things that you want to consider when you make your final school choice. Don't just look at the dollars. 
You want the school that is the best fit for you. The size of the school, maybe the division that it competes in, whether it's um, maybe the level, D1, D2, D3, NAIA. I mean, there's a lot of factors involved here. And my desire is when you make your final school choice, you are confident that this is the one. If you have worked the system that we're talking about here and you're working through the funnel, I feel that you will have multiple offers if you follow these steps. If you follow these steps that we've been talking about this week. So how did Bob and Kathleen make their choice when they were faced with multiple offers? Um, Of course, she got her offer on the first day, but there were others. They were going to have to, out of those 20, they didn't know who was going to make the offer. They were down to 20. How did they know how to stack those up and whether this offer they got on that first day was the right offer? How'd they know that? Well, three things. One, careful evaluation. Uh, You really need, this is the most important decision of your life to date, athlete. Uh, And your parents, it may be the most expensive decision to date, and they're trying to save some money. And uh, so this this is right up there. But careful evaluation. Don't just flippantly look at this these schools. Don't flippantly interview coaches. I mean, you got to go in depth in this process. Make careful evaluation. This is a huge life decision, academically, athletically, and personally. They made careful evaluation, thorough evaluation of these schools that were on their list. And as time went along, fewer and fewer schools on the list. They had 20. That's quite a bit. But they were able to evaluate those, and you need to do that as well. Second thing, interview coaches. Parents, the coach wants to talk to your son or daughter. They don't want to talk with you, but they do want to talk to you. They want to talk to your son or daughter first, but they do want to get to know the family, and you want to get to know the coaches. Uh, Athlete, interview the coach about athletics, about academics, uh, college life, finances, about the scholarship program, uh, about their coaching style. I've, I, in the Recruit Me system, I've got a whole uh, section on how to interview coaches. You need to take time and really dig in and even ask the hard questions. You may get some answers you don't like. You may find out some things about your favorite school that, man, now that you know something, that's not your favorite school anymore. And that could be, that could be hard because you had your heart set on it. But you got to ask those questions. So you go into it with as much information as you have before you make your decision. Because a year down the road, hmm, you may regret having made the decision if you didn't do your homework in advance. Now let me speak to those who aren't at the point of making the decision. This podcast is for you too. You want to be thinking along those lines. You want to keep your sights out there and look at the future. You want to be thinking ahead how you will evaluate these schools that you have conversations with. The evaluations need to take place through that period of time that may be years for you, a couple years. Continue to evaluate as you go along. Uh, Rank those prospective schools. The more you know about them, the more interaction you have with the coaches, rank them, you know, one to 20 or however many are on your list as you move along. Uh, That's not, it's not like one and five or maybe not too far apart, but, you know, kind of rank them. Maybe A, B, and C would be good instead of ranking them from one to 20. But you've got to have some perspective, be thinking about the end result even early on. And then I think the the third thing uh, is something that I have have worked out that I really love and families really love. And um, I'll tell you about that, that this is a tool that you can create on your own. Of course, it's all these things are in the Recruit Me system, by the way. This tool I'm going to tell you about as well. Um, but that's also in the Recruit Me system. But the first two things, one, do your homework and uh, make careful evaluation. Second thing is interview coaches. Talk with them. Have honest conversations with them. You want to know as much as you can ahead of time. 
I mentioned earlier that the new recruitment system has just come out. Uh, November 1st, it was launched. It was two years of study and work and refining to take what has, was already a successful athletic scholarship tool and system for thousands of families, but updating it because I felt it was getting outdated. And now this is a multimedia tool. It's video, it's audio, it's digital. I got interviews with college coaches for you and others. I've added to what was already in the new, in the Recruit Me system. And the videos go hand in hand with each of the steps in the process. It's a step-by-step -step process to an athletic scholarship. It takes you through what I'm calling right now the recruiting funnel uh, in more detail so that you're not, you're not only told how to do it, you're shown how to do it. You don't have to read about how to do it. You're shown how to do it. I do that through the videos uh, that I have in the system that I am the instructor for. It, this has become, over the years, almost two decades now, a leader in resources for recruiting. And now it's better than ever. I am more confident than ever in this. If you want the quickest road to recruiting, this is it. And if you want to get on Coach's Radar fast, like in the first 30 days, this will do it for you. If you want to know exactly what to do every step of the way, the Recruit Me system takes you through that. And you've got the best digital tools at your fingertips. It's all accessible immediately. As soon as you purchase it, you get access to it. You can download uh, the resources. You can go back anytime and watch the videos, rewatch them, watch them as the parent, watch them as the athlete, watch them together, discuss them. Man, you can become an expert in recruiting. And it's not that hard. Just follow what I teach you in the new Recruit Me system. Uh, you're not going to pay what you'd have to pay for a consultant or service, which is anywhere from 1000 to 2000 sometimes as high as $5,000 but you can help yourself to an athletic scholarship. I've been teaching and walking with families for nearly 20 years as they help themselves. I don't do the work for them, but I show them how to do it. I'm always at your side with questions you might have, evaluation, that type of thing. But the Recruit Me system is only $97. I mean, you can't beat it. And it's got a 90 day money back guarantee. So go get it, okay? <laughs> at recruitme.com slash system. Recruit-me.com slash system. One other bonus that I've thrown in there that is um, really strategic is I will give you a comprehensive review of your introductory packet, your email and resume or player profile. I'll look at that before you send it out. I'll touch it up. I'll make some suggestions and recommendations. You go back and you, may, and you make those adjustments. Even send it to me again if you want. If we need to talk on the phone about it, have a discussion. If we need to Skype together, we'll do that. But I want you to present the coaches with the best introductory packet. You can't make a second good first impression. You get one chance to make a good impression first time around. And I want this first time around to be excellent for you. Uh, that in, that is for anyone who purchases by November 10th. It's a limited offer with the complete comprehensive review. Recruitme.com slash system. Uh, let's talk about this third thing that um, will help you with the most important decision of your life to date. And that is what I call, what I've developed is the report card. Uh, you know, you've been evaluated all your life, athlete. <laughs> Uh, they're filling out report cards. Teachers are, uh, coaches are filling out evaluations and they're scoring you on all sorts of things. You may not even know that they got a report card on you for some things, uh, but I want you families. I want you to have a report card on all the schools that are in the hopper as you come down uh, to making that choice. You don't need to, to do it early on, but this report card is probably good to use as you get into the final months of making your decision. The offers haven't come yet, but you have a pretty good idea which schools are in the final running for you. This report card is more of an objective way of looking at things. Uh, what you do is you have different rows, uh, which 
uh, are things like the offer, the dollar offer, uh, the net. After all expenses, you could have a high dollar offer, but if the school's expensive, the net could be more than a low dollar offer. You want to look at the net. Uh, it has things in there like your opinion, your grade for the program, the football program, the basketball program, the track program, whatever it is, that program, what? how would you grade that on A to F? Uh, the coaching staff, how would you grade them A to F? Um, the school itself, how would you grade it A to F? Uh, there are variables that you want to put in there that are important to you. Distance from home, A to F. You might want to go close to home. Uh, you're not... A, you're not adverse to going far away, but man, you really want to go close to home. Put that in there because there's a this whole mix. It's not just one thing, it's several things. Whatever is important to you in your evaluation, put that on the list. Then score every single program, every single school on a A to F or 1 to 5, however you want to do that. That, when you get down to the end and you have... Uh, you have your final score in each of these schools, it is more objective because it can be confusing. So develop a report card for schools. I've got one in the Recruit Me system. Of course I do. Hey, I'm I'm just kind of trying to sell this thing, aren't I? <laughs> yeah, but I want you to have it. It works. And like I said, 90-day money-back guarantee uh, if you're finding it's not working for you. And you'll know real soon. Then uh, I'll, I'll refund your money. You can keep the bonus and everything. So um, that is, that's it for this episode. This is um, episode number six out of seven, seven days in a row. We've already gotten to the school choice and you say, John, what, what's next? You can talk about transferring after you get in. No, uh, this next episode, episode number seven is one that I've been working on for a while here that I feel is important no matter where uh, you are in the process. So I wanted to close with number seven, day seven of overcoming scholarship barriers. Overcoming scholarship and recruiting barriers. Uh, this recruiting road has bumps in it. Uh, it looks great on paper, but man, yeah, there's some bumps in the road and there's some barriers and roadblocks and how do you get over them? How do you get around them? Uh, these are things I want to talk about. The real life. I want to take it from classroom and theory. I want to get into real life and, and show you how you can overcome those barriers. So we'll talk about that tomorrow. Hey, invite your friends to listen. Go back and listen to the earlier episodes of the seven day series if you haven't already, um, because it all fits together. And I want you to be as best equipped as you can in the whole recruiting process. I want to close with this golden nugget. I do this in every episode this week in this series and something to hang your hat on a little bit of extra that I haven't uh, shared before, or maybe I've shared this once or twice, but uh, something that comes to the surface. And this is the nugget in this show. And that is listen to successful people, even seek them out. There are a lot of voices you're going to hear from other families and how they did this or how they did that, or they're discouraged because of this, or this didn't work, or that didn't work, uh, or you need to do such and such. You need to see this person. You need to use that service. You're going to get a lot of information from a lot of people, but look at whether they have been successful or not. Some of the best people to talk to are those who have gone through the process before. Everyone is different, but you'll see a pattern as you talk with families who've gone through the process before and their son or daughter got an athletic scholarship. Now you're going to find some families where they have an elite athlete, elite athletes. It's a whole different story. They don't have to work as hard to get the scholarship, but talk to other families, one or two, at least if you can find them and ask what they went through. You might even want to go online to your local newspaper, go back to the last signing period and see who signed. And then Look those people up. Give them a call and let them know that you want to talk with them. Track them down somehow and find out from other people. Listen to successful people, the ones who have done it right and got the results and seek them out. Well, that's it for this episode, and I'll talk to you again tomorrow.